This is going to get right at the heart of whether you understand what absolute value is, okay? And particularly if you're able to use those definitions and interpret, okay, how those definitions lead to something graphical, okay? So, what's tricky about this? Uh, there's really only one curveball in this question, and that's the fact that there's an absolute value signs around the Y. You're like, well, I'm not used to, it doesn't fit what I'm used to seeing. And so you don't use the normal rules. But actually, this will fit all the same rules you already know, okay? So, for starters, let's have a look at this part. Absolute value of X, okay? Now, by definition, I'm thinking at the moment of definition number three. Uh, three. By definition three, absolute value of X is equal to something at one time and something else at another time right, in a particular domain. So for instance, sometimes it's just equal to x. When is it equal to just x? When x is positive, right? If, actually when is a better word to choose, or perhaps I should say where x is greater than zero, okay? Obviously, alternative, if x is negative, then the absolute value of x is equal to? Negative. Yeah, negative x or minus x. Where x is negative. Come in. Good morning. Okay. All right. Now, in exactly the same way, y, the absolute value of y is going to follow the same rules. Except it's not going to be about x domains. It's going to be about y. Right. So this is going to be equal to y where y is positive. Yes. And where y is not positive, where it's negative, it's going to be negative y. Okay. Now this seems a little bit confusing. I still need this off the face of it. But actually, these four different restrictions correspond to something we're very familiar with, actually. If you draw up your set of axes, okay? Keep in mind, right? Because one of them's about x and one of them's about y, right? You combine them together. So for instance, you have an x and a y, then you have the same x and the other y, and you get different combinations, you get four of them, okay? So for instance, where x is positive, I'm looking at the right-hand side of the graph. Oh no. So I'm over here, and then where y is positive, I'm looking at the top. So where are both of those true? We have a name for that. We call it the first quadrant, right? This is x is greater than zero and y is greater than zero. Up here in this corner of the of the Cartesian plane. Okay? In exactly the same way, over here I still have x is positive, but now y is negative, right? Does that make sense? And then I can keep on going around. So four quadrants, four different descriptions of the inequality. Okay? So I'll just fill it out. I've got the negative case over here for x and the negative case for y. Okay, excellent. So now that I've identified what the values of x are and what the values of y's are, now I can know which of these cases I'm going to take. Okay? So for instance, let's take the easiest one. Okay? Up here in the first quadrant where I have both of the positive cases, I'm here, so the absolute value of x will just be x, and I'm here, the absolute value of y will just be y. Okay? So up in this region over here, I'm just going to be graphing this. <coughs> That's what I'm going to be graphing. Okay. Only up here though, only up here. As soon as I cross over, or cross over this way, I'm equal to something else. So let's go down to this case. X is still positive, but now Y is negative, right? So if X is positive, the absolute value of X is just X. But now, because Y is negative, the absolute value of Y is minus Y, right? So down in this region over here, I'm X minus Y. See what I'm doing here? Right? I just go through case by case and I can see I've got different equations in different places. Right? I'm just going to complete the pattern over here. X is negative, so I'm going to get ne negative X. Y is positive, so that's that. And then down here, uh, they're both negative. Okay. So now I can draw this thing. Right? Let's take it one step at a time. We don't usually see it in this form. This is not... This is not general form or slope intercept form. So I'm just going to rearrange it just a little bit, right? So we know what that looks like. I'm going to draw that up here. Okay. Now, that's what 1, one minus x looks like. 1, 1. And you can see it stops 
right? In fact, I'm only even going to put the boundaries on there. Because it's only equal to this in this part, which is the first quadrant. And then I'm, I'm finished. There's no other place that my original graph is equal to this particular line. Okay? Now come down over here. All right, what's this thing going to look like? Mm, 1 minus x, x minus 1. Okay, x minus 1, what does that look like? It's increasing, and I've got a y-intercept of negative 1. Right? So you can see I'm going to be down here going up. Yes? See what I've done? Again, down in this region only am I equal to this, right? So this has this equation, this has this equation, and you can probably start to see what's going on now. Right? You can match your equations, look like this one's going to be, this is minus 1 minus x, like so. Okay. Minus x minus 1. Okay. And lastly, over here, if I rearrange this, this is easy to see, this is just x plus 1, right? Connect the dots. Done. Okay. So, isn't that pretty? Okay. So, what have I done? I've looked at the four cases. I've got four different lines in four different regions. And that's it. That's all there is to it. 